Hello guys, I'm back from another video and today we're talking about what if Belle was from Terraria and before we actually say anything else, well, as you know, as some of you probably realize, or at least I think some of you realize, well, I'm currently in a different room because currently my room is, you know, getting renovated. Because, you know, I'm getting a brand new extension for my room, and it's actually going to be pretty cool when it's finally done. So, yeah, anyway, continue, like, continue on with the video. So, in the last video, we talked about how, after the battle between him and the, you know, Apollo Familia, they would basically get everything from their Familia, including their mansion, which, you know, Belle would decide to turn it into a mob farm. So, after, you know, going into the actual state and seeing several of the, you know, Apollo Familia members basically, you know, going off and basically being depressed, including the little midget that, you know, started the whole problem, and when he tried to, you know, you know, um, try to annoy him, you know, basically just, like, glaring at him, he would decide to bring out a terror prisoner blade and, you know, almost slicing his dick off, and so he would run away in a fit. So, after, you know, he ran away, he would start renovating it into a mob farm. After, you know, making it, he would also create, you know, some of the biomes, or at least the artificial biomes, that you will get from all of these, you know, you know, that is going to be, you know, acting as, you know, you basically get it, the, you know, so you can get some of the items from those specific mobs. Like, for example, he would create a crimson, you know, like, for example, a crimson biome, and also crimson, you know, based, you know, regions, like, for example, a crimson beach biome, and a crimson, you know, desert, and for another example, a hollowed, a ho you know, a desert hollowed, a, I guess you could say jungle hollowed, I can't remember if there's an actual, you know, um, I can't remember if it's an actual thing where there's actually, like, mobs in that type of place, a anyway, so, after doing all of that, he would also make the, you know, a little biome area for the, wait for a second, the so-called, you know, um, yeah, the mushroom biome, or the glowing mushroom biome. So, after doing all that, they would start going on to their, you know, routine, which is mostly going into the dungeon, getting some items, and basically giving it to, you know, the, you know, guild, and thanks to the help of his, you know, mob farm, which he uses it for, you know, selling items, and also selling some weapons, and also some of the, you know, or that some monsters, or at least some, you know, mobs in the game, would basically give it, and basically, you know, give it to, you know, Hephaestus, which she absolutely appreciates. And so, Belle's, you know, business is kind of the booming. So, as after a while, you would notice that the truffle has arrived in the, you know, the artificial, you know, glowing mushroom biome, which he would decide to make a house for, and would decide to make him, you know, stay there as some sort of worker. And not only that, he would also get a few more visitors, like for example, new NPCs. Specifically, a, you know, what is her name? A, you know, a steampunker by the name of Stephanie, and a merchant by the name of Henry. So, as they would basically join in, in the, you know, large-ass, you know, estate, which is now turned into, you know, a mob factory, which, you know, Stephanie was pretty happy for because it allows her to basically, you know, make several inventions for, you know, the production of more, you know, you know, mob items. And as for, you know, um, the merchant, the merchant is basically acting as, like, an accountant. Sort of. I mean, Mr., you know, Mr. Scrooge over there, which, you know, he's, you know, technically in the game if you, you know, get the Christmas update version or, you know, when it's finally Christmas, but I'm not going to be adding him in because for obvious reasons. And not only that, Ben would also decide to join and would basically act as, like, I guess you could say, like, you know, um, selling items and mostly just clothes. And by the way, the clothes are currently, you know, selling like hotcakes. But... One day, while he was going home on his usual route, he would see a familiar member from the used to be, you know, Apollo familia fighting against an innocent little girl. Not really innocent little girl, but, you know, you basically get it. And after defeating him, he would basically ask her, her name, and apparently her name was Aisha. So, after, you know, you know, 
um, after explaining her whole situation, which she was attacked by, you know, an Apollo familia member, he would basically, you know, you know, heal her up, and he would basically bring her to, you know, his house, aka the, you know, the main, you know, um, Hestia familia house. After introducing her to, you know, some of his members, like, for example, Vidas, and also, you know, um, what's her face? Yeah, um, Lily, he would basically bring her to his best bedroom and would basically, you know, show her some of the items and also, you know, give her a healing potion that allows her to, you know, fix her leg, but tells her that he should, you know, um, basically tells her that he, you know, that she should probably, you know, she should probably rest, I meant. So, after doing that, he would basically leave and, you know, for Aisha, she was actually lying. Apparently, it was a ploy so she can get into the, you know, the, you know, the Hestia Familia house so she can basically kidnap Belle. Apparently, after hearing about, you know, um, a certain, you know, Freya, you know, actually liking Belle, well, apparently, a certain, you know, goddess by the name of Ishtar wants to defile Belle so she can want to see, you know, um, Hestia fall into despair. And so, after contacting her, thanks to the help of a stone that basically, you know, basically acts as like a, you know, I guess you can say a contact point, or at least like a cell phone, basically. And so, after basically telling her everything, she would decide to make Belle hers, and maybe even let her join her familia, instead of, you know, this weak-ass familia, even though it's probably not gonna happen. And so, after doing that, all of them would basically fall to sleep. So yeah, so... This is basically, you know, the explanation about, you know, about what happened last episode. And so, let's talk about what happens next. So, currently with, you know, Belle and the rest of, you know, the, you know, Hestia Familia. They're currently in the dungeon as they're just, like, going around until something happens. So... As they're going down their route, which is currently the route where they first met, you know, the, you know, the old man in the dungeon, or more specifically the dungeon from, you know, Terraria, not the dungeon from, you know, the Manchi. As Belle and Vitas are basically going towards that specific area, they would basically break down the, you know, the wall, which somehow regenerated, which, you know, you know, Belle would start to think, this doesn't seem ominous at all. As when they broke down the wall, they would see the temple, or more specifically, you know, the dungeon from Terraria. When they were about to, you know, go in, they would start to hear chanting, which seems somewhat ominous. They would basically look over and see tons and tons of cultists. More specifically, cultists that seem to be wearing blue and, you know, gold-trimmed, you know, robes as one of them seems to be more prominent than the rest. Specifically, one of them almost seems to be wearing some sort of... Sorry about that. One of them seems to be more prominent, wearing some sort of like... Sorry about that. He seems to be wearing some sort of play doctor-like mask, which seems to be all white, with a simple golden eye peering out of it. He seems to be chatting in almost... <sighs> in an almost dark, almost like, you know, weird-ass tone, which almost resembles a demon. As while he's basically, you know, doing this chant, it seems to be in a different language. But, you know, Belle seems to almost remember it. As Latin. He sort of learned a little bit of rap, like, Latin from his, you know, you know, from when he was in college. Apparently, he was a bit of a, you know, a idiot at the time, and decided to go for, you know, linguistics, you know, linguistic studies, which, when he, you know, decided to go for that, he thought, yeah, we're just gonna do, like, Japanese or something. But unfortunately, he was wrong, and so has to have, you know, about, at least, like, you know, I can't remember how many years in college, which I don't want to know because I don't want to, you know, feel depressed after knowing about it, but let's just say about, like, six years of college. So, those six years of college were basically hell for him. So, just imagine something like that. And after hearing this Latin, like, language, or at least something similar to Latin, 
apparently it was something about like a dark lord from the moon. You know, as when he connected the dots. Yeah, this is just the moon lord. He would basically say to himself, as, wait for a second. So, as, you know, Bell would basically hear all of this chanting, he, like, Bell would just basically say this to everybody. Alright, guys. We should, re we should just get out of here. So, as everybody's trying to get out of there, you know, you know, try not to get noticed, you know, unbeknownst to them, the, you know, the main cultist, which I'm just be calling him, you know, the mad cultist, which, you know, which is the actual name of the boss, would just, you know, notice them right away when they first came in. As you'd say, it like, say to himself, this child... He certainly is going to be annoying in the future, but either way, I don't really give a fuck. He would basically say, as he's still chanting to this weird looking item, which resembles a disc with several, you know, runes that seem to be in different colors. More specifically, these colors were a greenish blue, a bright blue almost resembling the sky, a pinkish color, and a reddish color to, you know, like an orangish color. So, as he's still chanting, we go back to Bell and the rest of his group. After leaving that, you know, that weird looking session over there, they would basically arrive back home and would also get the, you know, Valis, obviously. And I should say, everybody is currently just like wondering, should we just change to the Hestia familiar or something? All of them would start to think in their minds. So yeah, going back with Bell. Wait for a sec. So, going back with Bell. Bell is currently going around town as he's, you know, just like going around. Currently, you know, um, let's just say, like, buying some stuff. Mostly for his girlfriend, aka Feistus. Because of the whole events during that, you know, the whole events during, you know, last time, specifically yesterday, which, you know, it was basically yesterday when they first met, you know, or at least first heard about the, you know, cultists. You know, Izuku... Not Izuku, I meant Bell. Ah, <laughs> oh, goddammit. As Bell would decide to just, like, you know, whole, like, just ignore the whole part about, you know, the whole, like, you know, oh, I don't know, the literal, like, summoning of the goddamn god. So, he would just, like, ignore that and would decide to get some gifts for his girlfriend, aka Hephaestus. After getting some flowers, some chocolates, and other, like, presents, like, for example, you know, necklaces... And also grabbing some, oh, I don't know, some, you know, brand new ores, specifically some aura calcum. And a bit of, you know, bits and pieces of titanium. So, after a while basically going around town, he would basically arrive back at the, you know, Hephaestus Familia household. Or should I say, forge. So, after arriving there, he would basically knock on the door as he would see a member of the Hephaestus Familia, as he would say this. Ah, Belle, um, what do you want? As you'd say this, oh, I'm here for my girlfriend. As you'd say this, ah, I see. Um, Mistress Suffice is currently over there. And so he would basically walk in. As you'd see, some of the members are currently, you know, you know, lazing about because thanks to the help of the forge, or at least the automatic forge, they're basically, you know, laying around having a bit of fun. Some of them are currently, you know, you know, learning from the machines and started doing all of those practices by themselves. And some others were just lazing around, doing nothing, while they just polish up some of the weapons. Like, for example, adding a bit, like, a bit of touches, like, for example, you know, um, yeah, like enchantments, for example, and things of that sort. As he walks into the forge, or at least, you know, the main forge of the Hephaestus Familia, specifically, you know, you know, Hephaestus' actual forge, or at least her personal forge, he would basically walk in and would say, Hey Hephaestus, um, are you here? As she would say this, Uh, hello Belle, um, what are you doing here? As Belle would look over, as he would say this, What? Can the guy like, just, like, you know, meet up with his girlfriend once in a while? As she would say this, Heh, <laughs> funny. Anyway, so, um, what are you doing here exactly? As he would say this, Oh, I'm here to give you these. As he would basically bring out the presents, including some of the, you know, ores that he got. In. As she would say this. Oh, um, thank you, Belle. Um, what are these? She would basically look at, you know, some of the ores, as he would say this. Oh, that's some titanium and some aura calcum. As she would say this. Whoa, this is certainly high quality, you know, 
this some certainly some high quality, you know, um, materials. I never felt anything like these before. Actually, never mind. I mean, it's probably pretty normal for you, after all. I mean, you're pretty, uh, pretty much incredible, and you're pretty experienced with these types of materials, right? As you would say this. Yeah, pretty much. Either way, um, how is your, you know, familiar doing? As she would say this. Pretty wonderfully. I mean, all of the, you know, all of the other familias, thanks to your help, started, you know, flocking to me to make some personal weapons for them. And let's just say, the weapons are certainly, you know, guaranteed to be high quality. She would basically say, uh, she would have a smug smile on her face, as you'd say this. Well, it's obvious, after all. You have the greatest boyfriend imaginable. As she would say this. Yeah, yeah, she would basically say with a happy tone. But either way, thank you for the gifts. As Bo would say this. Uh, you're welcome. Anyway, I'm gonna be going back home, okay? See ya. As she would say, yeah, see ya. And so he would basically leave as Sophisis would be, you know, checking out some of the necklaces that, you know, Belle gave her. I should say, uh, the guy certainly is good with me. And a bit, you know, a bit of a spoiler, she would say. As one of his, you know, one of her, you know, members, specifically a random, you know, familiar member of hers would say, Um, yeah, I guess. As she would say this. Anyway, go back to work. As she would say this. Um, right. As she would basically start to leave, going back into her, you know, normal routine. So, going with ba I meant going back with Belle. So, as Belle is basically going back home, he would basically arrive back at the church and would see some of his familiar members, including Hestia herself. He would also see, you know, um, Aisha. Aisha is currently, you know, working with some of her, you know, weapons. More specifically, a weapon that, you know, Belle gave her. In this case, a hollowed sword. Or more specifically, I meant platinum sword. Sorry about that. So, as she's basically polishing up her, you know, brandly acquired sword, she would say to herself, He certainly is generous. I wonder if she, you know, she's basically wondering if she's, you know, actually being pitied by, you know, Belle. As she would say to herself, Probably not. But either way, it's quite a wonderful gift, she would say to herself, as, you know, Belle would basically walk in, as you would say, hey everybody, as everybody would just look at him, as, you know, one of them, you know, one of them would specifically say this, oh, hey Belle, um, how is your, you know, day going to, you know, um, miss a physis? said Lily, as, you know, Belle would say this, uh, pretty well, um, I'm just gonna be getting some sleep now. So, guys, um, do you want to eat anything, or, as one would say this, specifically feed us? Well, I'm certainly is, you know, I'm certainly peckish, but not really right now. As, you know, you know, um, Hestia would say this. Yeah, not me. I'm not really hungry right now, so, as one would say this. I see. So, anyway, <sighs> good night. As after, you know, saying that, he would basically go into his bed, and so, he would basically leave going into his room and would fall asleep. Currently with the other girls, as the girls would basically start to leave, except for her, aka Aisha. As Aisha would say this, Sorry, Belle, but, unfortunately, it's her orders. So, after grabbing her sword, she would start to move, going towards, you know, Bell's room. As everybody, specifically, you know, Lily, Avid, like, Vidas, and also, you know, Hestia would start to leave, going into, you know, um, going on in, like, a, I guess you could say, like, a girl's night out, I guess you could say. Kind of. So, as they basically left, Bell is currently, you know, sleeping on his bed. As, while well, he's sleeping on his bed, you know, unbeknownst to him, Aisha is currently there, getting ready to, you know, strike. As she's walking towards Belle's room, Belle, you know, was there just, like, sleeping, as his pet Harpy, you know, his pet Harpy, aka, you know, Sarah, would basically awake. Yeah, you sort of forgotten about her, even me. <laughs> so, as Sarah is basically flying around his room, currently, you know, taking in her surroundings, mostly having a bit of fun, she would start to sense Aisha wielding a weapon and seem to be having some mixed feelings, more specifically, towards Belle. On one hand, 
she's doing this for a goddess when she's being forced to do this. But on the other hand, because of the kindness that he did for her, including, you know, saving her, which, even though it was more like a, you know, you know, it was, you know, it was a, you know, trick, you know, she was pretty happy that Belle was, you know, actually a pretty nice person. But either way, it's her job. So, as she's walking towards Belle's room to get ready to capture him, Vitas would basically fly in and would basically try and stop her. Vitas would start clawing at her as Vitas would basically, you know, look at her with an angry glare, even though she's, you know, currently her hair is basically still covering her face. As she would say this, What? Wait, a monster? Why, why is a monster here? And, wait, don't tell me that you're his pet. She would basically say, as she would say, Well, that is certainly interesting. And certainly is an interesting idea for Belle to have a pet monster. But either way, unfortunately, little birdie, Belle is going to be with Miss, you know, with Miss Ishtar for now. Or at least, you know, gonna be forced to, you know, you know, become Ishtar's brand new lackey. So unfortunately, little birdie, you should get out of my way. As, you know, Sarah would still be, you know, trying to fight her. Well, let me explain why, you know, um, why is she able to do this? Well, let's just say, when Belle basically first came into this world, he sort of had this, you know, idea for, you know, Sarah. Apparently, Belle did a Wolverine, and so would basically inject her with basically, you know, or a Calcum into her, you know, skeleton. Yeah. That's basically what it is. <laughs> yeah, even though it was a bit cruel, but still, it's for her own good. So, as Aisha was basically trying to fight it, she would basically start wondering to herself, why is this heartbeat so strong? As she would basically feel its strength coming from her, you know, legs and also somewhat her arms. As, you know, Sarah would basically, you know, flap her wings as sort of the feathers would basically come off. Specifically the greenish ones that are glowing. As it would start to command them almost like, you know, a symphony of death. A crescendo of chaos. As these feathers would basically start flying towards her at rapid speeds, almost acting like a machine gun. As while she was trying to dodge all of them, Belle would basically hear the commotion and would say, what the hell's going on? As you would basically open the door and would see, you know, as you would see Aisha and, you know, you know, Sarah fighting. As Bo would say this, wait, wait, Sarah, what are you doing? As Sarah's basically, you know, I guess you could say, like, I guess you could say, like, chirping as a bird, but, um, just imagine her, like, growling, like, similar to a dog, as she seems to be angry at, you know, you know, at, you know, wait for a second seem to be quite angry at, you know, a certain girl, aka Aisha. As Bo would say this, Aisha, explain! As she would say this, sorry Belle, but orders are orders. As she would basically throw a potion onto the ground, as it seems to be some sort of knock, you know, some sort of like knockback type of like potion. More specifically, a debuff one, which mostly pertains to, you know, um, knocking a person out. But, to her surprise, Belle would not be affected. But instead, Belle would say, Well, that's a certain... That's certainly a beautiful perfume, but it ain't my style. He would basically say, I should say, How? Uh, how are you not affected? As Belle would say this, uh, I guess you could say it's something else. Or at least, My armor's, you know, abilities. He would basically say, As his armor would start, you know, start to appear, basically covering his entire body. As Bo would say this. Now, I have a few questions for you. One, why are you doing this? And number two, if you don't answer them, you know, quickly, well, as you would basically grab his, you know, the, like his SDMG, as you would say, I'll just have to punish you, he would basically say with a low tone. As she would say this. Ugh. She would basically start to become a little bit, you know, angry, as she would basically charge over and try to fight Bell. As currently with Belle and, you know, 
Um, and also Sarah. Sarah and Belle are currently, you know, fighting against, you know, you know, fighting against, you know, um, yeah, Aisha with, you know, with almost brutal speed. As, you know, Sarah's basically moving at almost at a similar pace to a certain, you know, Grim Jowl, if you get what I mean. So, as she's basically, you know, throwing several feathers at her with rapid succession, as for Bell, he would basically start shooting out, you know, his DSMGs, you know, bullets, at rapid speeds as well. As she was basically surrounded on one side by several of the, you know, the large projectiles. As she would basically start screaming, WHAT THE HELL IS THIS BULLSHIT?! As she would basically scream out, as she would basically grab her, you know, newly acquired, you know, titanium sword, and would start slashing all of the attacks. As she would say, THAT'S ENOUGH! As she would basically grab the sword, as she would basically swing it, as it would create a large, you know, a large, you know, a large crater into his, you know, little hallway where some of the guest bedrooms are. As you would basically fall to the ground and would be damaged. A little caveat there. Weapons from Terraria does affect him, and so he would be knocked out. So, after being knocked out, Sarah would basically try and charge in and basically try and save her master. But unfortunately, Sarah was too quick and would basically capture him and would say to the little, little birdie as she would basically, you know, grab some sort of weird ass potion and would disappear. We go to the perspective of, you know, Sarah. Sarah was pissed and sad. Mostly pissed off at her, you know, pissed off at her opponent for basically, you know, tricking her, you know, master in believing that she was just an innocent girl. And sadness because she couldn't save him. As Sarah was basically crying, Sarah was just so angry at herself. And so, she would start becoming a little bit, you know, calmer and would decide to try and save her master no matter what. And so, she would go to his room and would bask you know, he would, like, she would basically grab, you know, some paper and some pencils and try to write a message in, you know, the language of, you know, of this world. As after finishing it, she would basically put it onto the desk and would explain, and would basically explain the entire thing, including how Aisha tricked everybody that she was, you know, um, just an innocent little girl, but instead she was actually, you know, um, a agent for, you know, Wait for a second. When he's an agent, or at least you know, while while she was actually an agent of you know Ishtar. So after doing all of that, she would basically you know, you know, just wait until every single member of the Hestia Familia would basically come back, except for Belle, as Vita's and also you know, you know, um, Vita's and also you know, um. What's her name? Yeah, Lily would basically walk in with, you know, um, with Hestia in tow, they would notice a slight change. Some of the, you know, furniture would be shooken a little bit, as she would basically say, um, I think I feel something is a bit different here. As she would say, wait, maybe Belle's, as she would basically open the, you know, little hatch where Belle's room is currently is, or more specifically, the guest bedrooms are. So. As she would basically open the thing, she would see a large crack across the floor. As she would run over there and would see a lot of damage in the walls and some of the furniture. As she would say, "Up, oh, guys, let's go! As everybody is basically getting out of there and mostly, you know, going inside to, you know, try and find out what's happened. So, after a while basically looking through the rooms, they would see that Aisha's room was empty. As none of them would say this, um, what happened to Aisha? And what happened to Belle? As one of them say this. I don't know, but this is definitely not normal, said, you know, Vidas. As for, you know, Hestia, Hestia was a bit worried because Belle was basically the backbone of their, you know, familia. As after she, like, after, you know, knowing that, you know, Belle's probably gone, she was a bit worried. And so they would basically make it towards Belle's room and would basically open it. Opening it would reveal, you know, Sarah. Sarah was basically, you know, there on the bed and seems to be quite depressed. As one of them would say this, Uh, is Sarah okay? Said, you know, um, Lily. As Hestia would say this, I don't know, but as 
you know, currently with, you know, Vita's, Vita's was confused, because she didn't see, you know, Belle use her before, specifically her pet, I mean, his pet, as you say, I'm guessing that's his pet, right? As you say, yeah, but it's more like his family, but anyway, where's he? As they would basically look over and see the note. As after grabbing the note, specifically, you know, Hestia, as, as Hestia was reading it, she would become pissed and even more pissed. She would become even more pissed after hearing about everything. As she would say, girls? As all of them would tense up, as they would say, what is it, Hestia? As Hestia would say this, it seems that Hestia, I mean, it seems that Belle has been captured. As all of them would say, by who? As she would explain, by Aisha, or should I say, the member of the Ishtar Familia. And so, after hearing this, they would become a little bit angry, knowing that Belle was tricked. And so, after telling them this, one of them would say this, Hey Hestia, we should try and save them, as, you know, Hestia would basically wield up her hand, I should say, No. We need to talk to some other friends of ours to try and save him. Particularly a certain goddess by the name of Freya and a certain goddess by the name of, you know, Hephaestus. As all of them would agree. And so, they would basically decide to try and call them tomorrow. As we basically end off the episode right there. So yeah, I'm going to be leaving the episode right off there, and so, I hope you liked the video, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye